So there's two philosophies I have as an artist. The first is organization is the key to success. The second one, it's more of a statement. If a cluttered desk is a cluttered mind, what's an empty desk? Right. So what I want to do today is I want to go over portfolio storage for traditional artwork the way I do it. I'm going to grab a cup of coffee, listen to the intro, and we'll talk to you in a minute. <laughs> storage today or, or portfolio or organization uh, for artwork at least traditional artwork is I saw something on uh, online a couple days ago and it was a it was a list of things that people no longer have in homes uh, because of generation uh, differences that type of thing and one of the things that came up was they said that one thing that Millennials don't have which I'm not my children are I'm a Gen Xer they don't have filing cabinets so that was uh, that was a little eye-opening for me I, I, I disagree with that uh, that statement I do believe that uh, the key to uh, success is organization um, I lack that somewhat so um, I think that there's there's room for improvement in every format but the portfolio is extremely important as an artist I look at my artwork that I've seen 20 30 years ago I still have the artwork uh, from when I was uh, God, 16 years old, 17 years old, and I look back on it now and how far I've come as far as an artist or a designer, um, but it's nice to have those uh, original pieces. What I want to go over today is my portfolio uh, storage, what I use, what I take to Comic Cons with me, and what uh, I think works the best as far as um, for my needs and my artwork uh, to show to the public. So a lot of the artwork uh, that I've got you know, this isn't the way to store a lot of this stuff. You've got books and that kind of stuff. It can fall out all over the place. It's just, you know, these are these are the way that I store some of these as far as sketches go. Um, you need to have something a little bit more substantial than this because hands can get on this. Oily hands. Uh, kids with uh, gum or whatever. And that, that could destroy everything that you worked on. For me, uh, even in a pinch, what I would do is I would use uh, some type of uh, watercolor book, that type of thing to keep things in, because I think that that's a, a real, if you're in a hurry, that's the best way to do it. So I'll record a lot of these uh, digitally as well, so that we've got, um, we've got some type of uh, digital format to them, um, online or as far as uh, on, um, on the computer, so that I've got got that as well as traditional. So you might recognize this. This is actually um, Retrieve One. I just want to show you that there's, um, before digitally enhanced and, and lettering and everything else on there, there is a, um, a set of originals that I use. And then from that point, I'll actually put them in a, uh, a display uh, portfolio that I'll take with me to uh, certain shows. I usually don't sell my originals. I usually only sell the prints. And this is one thing that um, the portfolio work that, I, that I'm gonna show you uh, is a little bit nicer to display um, the prints or the originals depending on, on what type of show I'm at. A lot of the, uh, the books that I carry are, this is a, if I'm not mistaken, a nine by 12. I'm actually upgrading, uh, this is the artwork from uh, Retrieve 2 actually, so then I'm move that light over a little bit so you don't have to see the reflection too much. Um, this is the cover for it. One of the things that I like about um, these particular portfolio uh, pieces that I, or portfolio books that I get from Michaels, um, is they've got the, uh, the protective plastic, but they're easy to access. So I mean, I can get, I can get these out if I need to do a scan or what have you. It's nice taking these to cons though, because I, I can put them on display. If somebody wants to see the original artwork, they can. If they want to purchase a print, of course, I can have a print uh, ready. 
um, or I can put these um, in print format so that these aren't the originals in the book. Uh, which, you know, like I said, this depends on which cons I'm, uh, which comic cons I'm going to. But and you can see how many other extra pages they've got. Usually the comics that uh, I'll put together are 20 pages um, for the standard, 21 pages. But look at all the extra uh, backup that we've got as far as that goes. You can do um, extra artwork or additional artwork uh, or additional print work. But these are the, the standard of what I usually get. Um, they run about $20, uh, give or take. I also have um, another one that I'm actually uh, the larger size. Uh, this one here is the 11 by 17. And this is what I'm going to be using forward on a lot of the, uh, the comic book artwork that I'm going to be doing. Some of the... Uh, other books that I've been doing, it's harder to create the artwork uh, and then stretch that artwork accordingly to fit into the parameters for a comic book. And I think it's it's just going to be easier on both uh, time restraints and everything and, and production to get it into a larger format. But I do like these. This one I think retailed uh, normally, I think it was $35. Itoya is the company. And uh, yeah, they're great. They're durable and they're economical and they protect your work. As far as printed artwork, I mean, comic books in general, I think that storage uh, organization and storage of those is paramount. When you buy a comic book, it's a good investment. There's a lot of these comic books years ago that, I mean, I paid 50 cents for that are worth hundreds of dollars now. So, I mean, there's a lot of good, um, not just good stories, but good investment. And like that, I wanna protect what I've purchased. Now, some of these um, are simple. Everything that I sell for my comic books are always gonna be boarded and bagged. So you know you got it from me if they're always boarded and bagged. As far as that goes, I think that you should always have boards and bags for comic books, always. I think that that is, uh, is part of your portfolio too if you're a comic book artist. And I think that uh, just from an investment standpoint, very inexpensive, 30 cents maybe, to do bag and board each comic, well worth it. Or even frame your work. Get it to the point where you can at least display it. That'll protect it too. I'm not saying that you should do that for every piece, but I think you should frame them. Get them out to everybody. Show the world what you're doing. That's the whole idea of this. Make the world a better place. Produce something that's gonna make people smile. I don't care what type of tote you get. You can get one with a lid like this or one that has a lid that goes on the top but you can keep your artwork and everything else inside a tote. You can take it with you to the Comic Cons. It's the way to go. A uh, couple bucks, get them at the dollar store, get them at Walmart, whatever. Get something that has some handles on it so you can at least carry it around. It doesn't take much to store your artwork. As far as the presentation of a portfolio, whether it's online or whether it's in a physical uh, for traditional artwork, get it, do it because I think it'll promote you as a business owner and as an artist and show people what you can do. The whole idea of this is to make the world a better place. So do that through your art. Much success, no envy, no fear. If you like what you saw today, please subscribe and like and share and we will see you the next week.